After a recent preview event, we now have another huge slice of gameplay to look at and a firm release date for The Last of Us Part 2. It's coming out on the 21st of February 2020 and, well, we've got some super high quality 4K output footage to show off uh, from that, delivered directly from Sony. Now from what I understand, this is PS4 Pro and it stands to reason given what we're seeing. More on that in a second, but to join me to discuss what we're seeing here, I've invited none other than John Linneman. Hey Tom, we are indeed seeing some interesting things. First, starting with the file size. Oh my god, yeah. M these MXF files that we have here, it's like 800 plus megabits per second. <laughs> the bitrate is insane on these files. It looks, it really genuinely looks like a direct feed. Like you're looking at the real game running on your monitor. So it's a, it's a great look. Yeah, it's completely overkill. Uh, this is for sure one for the Patreon users. If you subscribe to Digital Foundry on there, you can get the source file to all this, but besides that, I'm sure it'd look great either way. We're getting some super high source quality material here. So what we're looking at, as I just said, it appears to be running on a PS4 Pro, and I can infer that just by the fact that, well, uh, pixel testing these video clips, the footage appears to be running at 2560 by 1440. Ah, uh, so basically the same as Uncharted 4. Yeah. Running on the Pro. Yeah, so also this is a 30 FPS feed, and I imagine it will be running at that for the final game. Whether or not we'll get like the suite of options we had in the original The Last of Us. Uh, I would say no. That was a conversion of a PS3 game, so it's very unlikely that we'll see that, I'd imagine. It, this will probably be like Uncharted 4, and that's fine. Their anti-aliasing is excellent. Yep. Image quality is excellent at this stage, so, I mean, it's what you would expect from the hardware. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll get something more, you know, in a potential PS5 release down the line. When we turn the corner, we'll get more options, but we'll have to see. The Last of Us Part 2 remastered. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a bit of a mirror image to the way this has been released at the tail end of a generation. I think, like, the original pushed PS3 down to, like, 20 FPS or something at some point, so... Yeah, I mean, actually, that's one of the benefits. We can't frame rate analyze this yet, mainly because of the fact that the files themselves are 30 frames per second, and that requires 60 to function. But what we're seeing here is very stable in terms of performance, extremely stable, in fact which is exactly how The Last of Us did not run on PS3. They really pushed that system to the absolute limits, and I'm sure they're doing that here as well, but they've clearly kept an eye on visual splendor, but stable performance, and I do appreciate that. Looking at the way this uh, new footage uh, kind of unfolds, we start off with a horse ride through the snow, and yes. it is an interesting opener. What are your thoughts on how this looks? It is extremely dense with lots and lots of detail. They have excellent sort of snow trails that they've done there. It looks like deforming terrain. And in fact, there's that point where her girlfriend rides through the river and the, right around the edges of the river, it's sort of like frozen with ice. And the way the horse sort of breaks through the ice it, before it transitions to the water, really cool detail. I guess the thing that for me though, is the very first thing that came to mind seeing that footage is actually Red Dead Redemption 2. Has a very similar opening, but the level of detail here is ridiculously high. So I guess one of the themes that we'll see throughout all of this footage that I really like, and this was true of the original game, but obviously the hardware is more capable now, but there's a real focus on indirect lighting. Like they do get flashlights, but there isn't really any man-made direct lighting in this game world outside of those flashlights. So everything you see is sort of lit by open windows or just like whatever is in the atmosphere. It's, you know, basically from the sun. And so the way the light reflects around the room and they handle the indirect lighting, it's it was great in the original and it's definitely improved here. They did this in the original game, but those dust particles are much, much higher resolution now. Like they actually befit like the quality of the final output on a uh, pro. And also uh, the one subtle touch I really like about the flashlight is, you know, that kind of shaded part in the center, which kind of reflects the bulb. It's sort of the refractions of the bulb lining and that changes uh, form and shape naturally as you pan your camera around. Yeah, indirect lighting, the shadows spot on. Well, in looking at this demo, I've really wanted to know what is the big technical push? What divides this from the original The Last of Us, which already looked incredible, remastered on PS4, 
And the main thing that I came away with was the word detail, like micro level detail, to a point that you can go on for a long time just looking at this shot of the workbench where Ellie starts building a gun, adding attachments, even filing it down, using a cloth. Everything about this tiny part of the game is laboured over with such immaculate detail. Even the table, which has got kind of a metallic surface to it with all those cracks and divots, it looks so high detail. It is true that the type of world that they've built here is one of the most difficult to render well, at least in an attractive fashion, in the sense that, you know, usually you can wow people with a lot of bright lights and shiny surfaces and things like that. But the lighting here is so subdued and natural, and they really do a great job of like giving the impression of an abandoned area. This is a pretty significant leap in terms of both lighting and detail, as you say. Yeah, I mean, you notice the extension lead on the side as well with the kind of button she presses just for the light. Oh, I, I love that. That's a great detail. <laughs> I mean, who, who would have thought of that? I mean, that's a, a master stroke. They've clearly sat down and thought this through, how to make this a very intimate moment of constructing a gun. And all the, the sound design as well just plays right into that. There's other things too, though, like the backpack, which obviously gets a lot of screen time as you run around. The kind of leather straps sway around, and even the bag creases to movement. And those clickers as well, they look incredible. That right there is what makes the biggest difference is just the materials quality. The clip where she's like sneaking through like the basement of the house and the way the lighting sort of seeps in, you get the, the reflections with the screen space reflections everywhere. Yeah, there's actually a lot of SSR in this game. It doesn't seem to have much of the artifacts I'd usually associate with SSR. There's maybe a one or two blips here and there, but I mean, in terms of the presentation of everything here, the motion blur, feels like it's just taken the note straight out of Uncharted 4's book. Looking at the motion blur closely, it, just stepping through this frame by frame, it does seem to be a higher sample count. And it looks really good as well because they have a very strong film grain. That's probably not going to come through on the YouTube video, unfortunately, but if you're looking at these super high bitrate files, the motion blur combined with the film grain really does lend it that sort of virtual camera look that I really like. I'll slow down a bit of footage to try and get a sense of what we're looking at there. But yeah, it does look a lot more pristine than a lot of games by the standard. I think the kings in the field for me are the id tech games, uh, Doom and Wolfenstein, or Wolfenstein, or however Alex pronounces it. And Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Yeah. <laughs> I won't, don't worry, I won't tell Alex that you get it <laughs> It's wrong. okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, those two are the kings of that area for me. But, yeah, uh, absolutely. you know, as it goes, I think as a package, Naughty Dog really nailed that cinematic aesthetic. And they do it time and time again. And yeah, this is no exception. I mean, with these preview kind of videos we're doing here, there's only so much we can really deduce from looking at pre-recorded footage. But I guess the key takeaway here is just the fact that it, it kind of lives up to what I expected. I'm also happy to see that the animation remains as fluid as that previous trailer that I examined. Oh yeah, you mentioned the motion matching system or, you know, contextual animations. They've done a lot of layered animation for a long time in Uncharted and their other games. But motion matching obviously takes that to the next level and just allows them to pull from like a bucket of so many different types of animations almost, resulting in a very natural looking movement. It is exciting to see, and I'm also curious about the world structure because the, it has been kind of hinted that the, you know, what they, if you recall what they did in The Lost Legacy, I guess it was, it did what I kind of like where they sort of had a wide linear design where you had this pseudo open world kind of area that you'd explore and you'd kind of be going back and forth through. But it's not an open world game where you're just going to NPCs and getting quests and doing tedious things. There's main areas that you visit for the story that kind of like intersect with parts of the large open map. And it kind of gives you a little bit of a sense of freedom without just going full open world. Based on what we're seeing here with the snowy areas as well, it does seem like maybe that's the direction they're going in. Where it's like, it's a huge world to explore, but you're still going through in a linear fashion. I like this idea of a wide linear game, and I really hope that that's what they do deliver. Another tidbit that came out of the recent preview event was that the multiplayer is being detached from this main package, at least for launch. I love the multiplayer in the original game. It's one of my favorite experiences of the last five, six years. Yeah, so that gives it a whole new breadth of options, I think, in terms of what Naughty Dog might try to do with it. So, you know, obviously we're going with 1440p at 30 FPS with the main story on Pro, but could be targeting 60 in the multiplayer. It could 
manifest as all sorts of things. It could be a free-to-play type model, it could be anything. So yes, uh, for now Naughty Dog is polishing up just the story part of the package and the, the gameplay, the cutscenes look gorgeous as you'd expect and it could be the swan song that this generation needs after the original did the same on PS3, was it, six years ago? So uh, really I can't wait to see more and it's not really too long to wait. But in the meantime, I think that'll do it for today. Thanks so much for joining me, John. But of course. And if you did enjoy this quick look at The Last of Us Part 2, don't forget to like and subscribe to support what we do at Digital Foundry. And don't forget to hit that bell to get notifications as any new video lands. And crucially, to get this video at source file quality, we'll have that up on our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. To get in touch with me or John or Rich or Alex, just use Twitter, but from the both of us, thanks for watching.